Chris, you haven't seen it before. This no. is the first time you've seen it. What do you think? I saw the first five minutes and had to run away because I couldn't bear seeing myself portrayed by Martin Freeman. And I, I could see the sort of style that it was developing. And the story is entertaining. It, it brings back memories. Yeah. Um, it's, got, it's wrong in many places, but it's not wrong enough to be worried about. Mm -hmm. There was a lot more to it, I can tell you. Yeah, a, a, lot, hell of a, a lot, lot more complexity to, to the whole story, obviously. Um, I mean, the thing is, there's time compression that goes on mm, to fit this mm, into an hour and a half, mm, but, mm, you know, things have to go. Um, and you but, forced me to watch it. It was. <laughs> it, come on. You know? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, what? Well, you did a little bit. Well, I enjoyed it because I could interject every now and again. Um, I didn't interject as much as I might have done. <laughs> oh, don't you think any of any us did. <laughs> You should have done that. Was that was the point? You were here yeah. to interject. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, but Herman, I mean, how do you feel about having I, I this could, represent Acorn's history or about I, I, part I, I of Acorn's was, history? I thought it was very entertaining. Uh, I think it was close enough to the truth to be not to worry about the, you know, the way you have to exaggerate some uh, of the scenes, like the one when the BBC actually walked up the stairs. So it wasn't ten minutes before. Um, I cut that umbilical cord, it probably was two hours or so. Three hours after. Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours after. Right. Uh, and, and, and of course the cutting of the uh, cord wasn't, um, wasn't as dramatic as, uh, as portrayed in the thing. Uh, but the reason that I gave for uh, why it didn't work was absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. You stand by that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the cutting wire scene, of course, is... is is made to be resonant of, of the bomb disposal. Exactly, crew, which is why it annoys me. But I mean, that's, that's, that's how it's done. To yeah, add to the it's hardly a bomb, is it? But, it's, yeah. um, but uh, I think it, for a lot of people, though, that, that certainly that come into the museum have seen the film. And the thing is, that is how they now assume that history is, or that moment in time was. So things like this do have a big impact on the wider general public. Um, so, you know, doing things like this and then correcting some of that that sort of thing. Yeah, just simple things like the Baron of yeah. Beef and... You I know. mean, you can go into each of the scenes and, and correct it to, as far as uh, we remember it, but we don't remember it perfectly either. But it was close enough to the mm. truth that it told the story roughly as it was. As I, as I always say about how it's portrayed by Sam Phillips, so, you know, apart from the glasses, the beard, the smoking, Yes, uh, yeah. apart from that, everything was... Bad. It could have been me. Yeah. <laughs> I will admit to the tank tops. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the, the smoking thing, of course, has always bugged me a bit because mm. I'm, I'm, I haven't touched tobacco since I was 12. Right. That's, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> um, you mean and, the smoking and, sort. And yeah. even, uh, even in the early 80s, I'm pretty sure smoking was deprecated in public areas of, of workspaces. Because I do remember... When, when Acorn was taken over by Olivetti, I was sent to meetings in, in, in Ivrea in Italy. I was horrified right. the, that the Italians still it's smoked in meetings. Like because that, so I'm, I'm sure that in, in Britain that, that had gone by, by that time, and, and I would not have been smoking in the lab, even if I were a smoker, which I mm. wasn't. Right. But, but it, it's, it's used as a technique to invoke past ages, okay, and you, you, yeah. you see oh, yeah, this absolutely. quite a lot. Because well, people the, know it doesn't happen now, so it's obviously past because it's happening, right? So the, the interesting thing about the smoke is that what this was, um, it's not by the first by any means, but it's one of the early films to be shot in HD. Um, and um, it was, I, I was just thinking, you know, looking at the pictures, they were actually not very good. So even HD then isn't HD now. Well, so, so they actually kind of downgraded the HD. They didn't like the feel that the HD had. Um, so the director, I believe it was director Sol Metzstein, um, just wanted to give it a little bit more of a grainier and a bit more of an 80s feel. So the smoking was actually an effect, a true effect in the air to just soften the image a little bit because it just seemed too sharp. And, well, because also they're intercutting it with old 80s footage as well. That, that, so, that's what I was going to say. That, that um, so to, to the, if you, if you it made the grading much easier too. If you switch between modern HD and, and, and 80s standard definition, mm. you, it's just the, the old stuff's just going to look wrong. Yeah. So they had to downgrade yeah. the new stuff a bit, so the old stuff that blended in better. Yeah, and it yeah. was just the, the feel they were, they wanted to get to, to give it that kind of, and also because HD just looked that little bit too sharp and didn't yeah. didn't, didn't sit well. But um, so yeah, things like that were were technical reasons or sort of practical reasons to get over those technical um, issues they were having. But um, but yeah, I mean, how does it? You couldn't possibly do a film that was a lot about Clive without having 
smoking. In well, no, 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 not the scene cleansing. I saw mean, so everything. Yeah, everywhere, he was. He was much like a statue. Everywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. So. Just uh, halfway down, and he'd stub them out, and then another one, and another one. So Chris, you're probably best place to answer this because people do ask whether the film is actually quite unfair towards Clive. What do you think? Well, I don't, I don't, it, it would have been if, if I, because as I said, I did have a go at uh, modifying the script a bit mm -hmm. a couple of times before it was turned into a film. But uh, it, it did try to make him look a bit of a buffoon, I think, in the first, right. in the first round. Mm -hmm. But in, watching that, I don't think even Clive would be that upset about it. I mean, he's upset about the past. It hasn't, you know, things haven't worked out the way he wanted. Mm, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but the way it was fairly, the it film. was fairly harmless, mm. I think. A number of people have said that you know he was a, a really nice guy to uh, to a lot of his staff and to, to people around him would um, sort of give out spectrums and things like that. But when Actually, his back was against the, the wall, one, well, the one he thing that out. didn't that didn't come across in any of the scenes is Clive actually had enormous charm, mm. and probably still does. Uh, 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 you know, he, uh, all the tantrums and the scenes that he saw were absolutely true, although, uh, you know, you know more about this than I do. But when I met him, he, I always felt he was actually quite a charming person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, I couldn't see one scene that showed that side of him. Right. No. I'd and he also had, uh, you know, the thing that he has, which was quite, uh, uh, quite uh, n nice was his voice. He, he has this very deep, uh, sonorous voice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's very engaging. It's mm -hmm. very powerful too. He yeah. used his voice to uh, control, right. um, oh, not unashamedly, no, mm -hmm. but uh, he did. And mm -hmm. yes, you're right, Terman. He he was a charmer yeah. as well as being a ferocious yeah. person. <laughs> so I never met the man. Haven't you? No. Uh, we're no. talking about it as if he's not alive, but he no, is still. I've never been. I don't think I've ever been in the same room as him. Um, uh. But I mean, I, I thought in terms of, of, of characterisation, um, I think Martin Freeman played Chris just a bit too straight. Right. Chris has a slightly straight in what way? To well, Chris, Chris, Chris has a bit of a cunning side and a bit of a sly side, which which, uh, <laughs> which, which Freeman kind of leaves out. I think. So. Uh, I, think <laughs> I, I think I got all your slyness thrown in <laughs> double. <laughs> I just moved to the wrong character. <laughs> Do you think that's fair? Uh, I think I, I think I, I'm I'm pleased with what Steve says. <laughs> you know, I've always felt that Freeman is a bit of a Oh, a bit too mediocre, bit of middle of the road, pleasing everybody, smirking in his adverts and things like that. But I'm, I don't think <laughs> I'm quite like him. Uh, but no, and I, I hope no, I'm not. No, you're not. Yeah, you're I, definitely not. I also don't think that you ever were as submissive to Clive as it, it was painted. Uh, no. I mean, I clearly, uh, you know, Clive was the dominant mm. figure, but you, mm. you didn't, you weren't submissive to him. Mm. No. Mm -hmm. So that, that probably... You did as you were told. Yeah. <laughs> that meant for some heated times, I'd imagine. I don't think we ever had serious arguments, no. not heated up, well, apart from that little fist of beef. Was that was, that was because he got me around the head, and it just... I always get angry. I never lash out, but it, yeah. that somebody hits you in the eye, and he did it from behind, so he didn't know what he was doing. And I just turned around and lashed out. But, mm. you know, it's nothing. I would never have dreamt of doing it no, under normal no, circumstances. No, you mean, no. No. And, yeah. of course, we immediately became better, probably slightly better friends after that. <laughs> than, uh, than we were yeah, it takes that kind of thing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so when the, the, the film's uh, sort of at its, at its peak and everything's going really well, um, then there's obviously that that down and, and with the with the electron and everything going. Uh, how did do you think it sort of captured that time from the, the highs to the lows? It went very highs? quickly. It went so suddenly. It, it there was, was an really awful quite, lot of things quite going an emotional, on. An emotional roller coaster uh, because uh, you know the, we, the reality or the or the, the first, reality, reality when, yeah. when we were riding high, we were featured as the just the the, the geniuses uh, of British. A business because uh -huh. there had never been uh, a business before that went from zero to a hundred million pounds turnover, not not just capitalization like nowadays, but real revenue mm -hmm. in five years, as well, we did. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, the head, then, of, the, head of, the head of ICL, um, who I met somewhere, said, uh, you have, we're, we have here the two biggest computer companies in Europe, which I found a bit difficult to believe, but he meant us, right. Acorn and ICL, because actually their share price was very similar to ours. It's unbelievable, well, isn't it? It, it, it was, was unbelievable. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, when we were really being featured as um, people who couldn't do anything wrong and were the geniuses of, uh, of the age, uh, and then within a year, all of a sudden, uh, you know, we were really struggling and hadn't we not been rescued by Olivetti, we'd have gone bust. Yeah. So it was, it was a real downer. What did that do to you in terms of you know, your personal life? Go home from work. Well, the rescue was a bit of an artificial thing. I'm, I know Herman doesn't talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it. I mean, because there's somebody watching. Um, we were told by Olivetti that they'd buy a percentage of us and they would use their world marketing capacity to get rid of all that all that warehouse full of electrons. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. no, that's right. After a year, they hadn't sold a single product, not one after a year. So Herman and I had a meeting with Olivetti's boss, the great De Benedetti, and he said, what, we haven't? I'm amazed, I'm gonna call a big meeting. Mm -hmm. And he called a big meeting of his entire staff. We sat with, uh, with De Benedetti on the, top of the, on the top platform, and he said, my friends here from England have told me that this has happened. Why is this? I want to know. And he almost did a Mussolini bang on the table. Right. Whether he was just acting or not, I will never know. But there was complete silence from his entire sales staff. And then one of them said, but we sold 400 million of our stock to IBM. No, it wasn't IBM, it was AT&T. Uh, AT 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 uh, and part of that deal was that we should never sell anything except IBM PCs. Uh, uh, eight, no, uh, uh, AT&T. Uh, uh, what, 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 what computer what did they sell? Uh, NC, uh, but they were the same, they were the yes, same yes, yes, operating yes. system. Yes. And uh, so that they'd was all the been deal. told not to sell anything but yeah, yeah. the thing that uh, was... Uh, MS-DOS. MS-DOS, that's right. MS -DOS, MS -DOS, yeah, that's it right. was all MS-DOS. And, uh, and uh, at that point, we realised that actually... If we'd have had some sharp lawyers, we'd have sued Olivetti to kingdom come and, be, and still be struggling yeah. along as they call. But we didn't because you can't afford to do that sort of thing when you're in mm. the shit and you've got a load of, um, a load of savage um, creditors knocking mm. on your door. Mm -hmm. no, it's a shame because the electron so would have been fabulous. Uh, yes, a machine it that yeah. should have... So how, how did the electrons finally got sold? They, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't. They didn't. There, there, there were lots of them. There, there, there were lots of them dumped. Through well, Dick, Dixons were selling them for yeah. 50 quid. For 50 quid, that's the, right. But that was the Christmas after. Yeah, that was yeah. Christmas after. What, what happened was this. 83. Um, if the, one of our salespeople came and said, uh, um, I've got a customer for, who wants to buy half a million, no, not half a million, 100,000, um, Electrons. electrons. That's mm. right. Oh, right. That's was all right. Let's see. Who are scam, they? Well, it? actually, they're selling them in the Soviet Union. <laughs> Never thought of that as a market. They were still yeah, brilliant idea. Yeah. It was pre. It was just Glasnost time. Uh, so we saw these people, and they came to us, and they said, "We've got here. We couldn't pay any bills." They slapped on the table half a million quid bankers' draft, right. and said. We want you to ship 20,000 of these things at 60 quid each okay. to our office tomorrow. Well, we rang, the, we rang the, the, the warehouse, said, can we get this all done tomorrow? Because they want them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They said, yes, we can. Uh, we went back and thought about it. And we said, we're not going to put your draft in, but... They left it on the table. They said, leave it there anyway. Right. There it is. That's our... And they went away. And the next morning, they were selling them 50 quid, where we were selling about 90 quid, all over to all our distributors, claiming that they had bought the stock to sell. 
and then they then they tried to sue, then they set lawyers on us saying that we breached the contract, and the only reason they could say we breached the contract is because they'd left a cheque on the table, a yeah. banker's draft on the table, and we had our in-house lawyer sitting with us, and he didn't say he was a lawyer. That was why we were wiped out by that deal because he he didn't say he was a lawyer. So they said you were in breach of all sorts of rules right. uh, because he didn't announce himself as a lawyer. Um, and was that Timbo? Yeah. Mm. He disappeared after that. That was all again. Um, but those, those, yeah, they we turned were, out to be the people the from that crooks. carpet carpet company that went around buying stock from companies in difficulty. It was right. what they did. They told the story. They'd got a new market in Timbuktu or yeah. Southeast Asia or something and bought everything at a really cut price and then took it and then undermined your entire and, yeah. distribution organization. That was the most that was awful the low, thing. That, that was, was the like low, uh, low, 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 low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because what a, what a product it was. I mean, the, it was a brilliant the, product. The, the chip in the Electron, which, yes, Ferranti had some difficulty making it work. Mm. It was the biggest ULA they'd ever built, wasn't it? Yes. It was yeah. It was a double... 12C? 12C, that's right. And it was uh, double access to four uh, DRAMs, wasn't it? Yeah, we Rather went to 64, 64 kbit, four 64 kbit DRAMs. Yeah. Double access to get a byte. Double access out. to get a byte. So it was lower performance than the BBC Micro. Yeah, but it was cheap. Yeah, uh, it was, but it, but it, it did all, all the peripherals as well. To about fourteen. You took all your all the other stuff out. That's right. But most all everything all was every, in one so chip. The three, the bit C, the mem C, and the I O C went into that one. Well, be careful. Vid C, mem C, I O C are actually ARM yeah. chipset. So, so, so what were the previous ones so, called? So we didn't, Proc. We didn't quite. We, we, we had a video ULA, a serial ULA, so on the BBC Micro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, but they were called Bitproc before. No, no, no. no. That's all. So what was it? What, what, what did Doesn't we call it? It was the video ULA and the serial ULA mm -hmm. on, on, on the BBC Micro, which were small for anti ULAs. But I mean, as I say, the BBC had 102 chips on that motherboard. Right. And the, the Electron had about 30 or 14, four. I think. 14? Yeah. So, so, so that was, really was the breakthrough. It was a huge reduction. Um, and of course, the 64K DRAMs had come in. Uh, and they were much more cost effective than, you know, you, yeah. four 64K DRAMs replaced um, 16. Uh, 16 uh, 16K uh, DRAMs. Right, yeah, they, <laughs> they were the other problem. <laughs> because DRAM suddenly became impossible to get when you wanted it. That's right. It was one of the reasons for the delay. Them, yeah. You had to buy them two no, years the, in advance. The main, the main reason for the delay was the ULA, though. Yeah, we, we, we had trouble getting the ULA to work. Um, we'd, we'd had problems on the BBC Micro with Vidproc, if yes. you remember. I thought it was called zero. Vidproc. I thought it was only no, called Vidproc at the Video time. ULA. <laughs> Twinkling in mode zero because of yes. speed issues. Because so with the Electron yeah. ULA, we we redesigned all that so it was bound to work, and it didn't. And it it, uh, it was I squared. I, I have long arguments at Ferranti's about the reason why it didn't work, and I said it's because the logic swings too low. No, the reason I remember the, the reason because we used ninety six percent of the chip that never and, and nobody had ever used well, that percentage. Yeah, but we of, we of we, we, well, we built we built the tools to run on the BBC Micro, so we, we designed the ULA on the BBC Micro. Right. Um, but no, the it. problem was the logic swing, and, and and I got to the bottom of this, and 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 they didn't believe me. But I said, well, you know, increase it, tweak those things, increase the logic swing by fifty percent, all the problems went away. But, but, oh. that, but that was 84. So we missed the 83 Christmas, which was when the big... Because of the ULA. Because of the ULA, when the big opportunity that, that, was. That could have made the that would have made difference all to... all the difference. That would have made all the difference. Yep. That would, well, we, that's life. I mean, the company basically did two things that cost a lot of money, about the same each. And one was the venture into the US market. Yes, so and about other, 20 million. And the other was the Electron. Yeah. America cost us about 20 million. Didn't it? Mm. What was that guy's name? Uh, he was a Sony executive that we that who you hired at at the Las Vegas show. 
he was he was the, on the Sony stand, and we quite liked him, and he ran the American operation. And he really well, didn't, I don't remember the Sony do connection, it. but um, I do I do remember talking to people over there and thinking this. Well, I think first of all the. Um, uh, the Apple reps thing was was led us into yeah. disaster. The other one was the chap that was doing a, a Windows uh, variant for us at, in uh, on the west on the west coast. Yes, uh, who was he? You were more dealing with him there. Yeah, the was that. Was he the only one? No, no, he was. Uh, it wasn't Microsoft. What? Microfocus. Right. Wasn't it microphone? Who was the guy? No, there were the but people. This the operating system for the. But the big deal with the, with the US thing was was the FCC. We, we, FCC put, we put so yeah. many connectors on the machine. Yes. And to pass FCC, you had to have a meter of cable in every connector. Yes. And the thing just radiated like crazy. Yes. Mm. And fixing that was so expensive. And they put. We, we well, they, I remember they put a complete yeah. uh, metal, metal case, case inside. Case. Inside. Steel they've, they've, got case. Case. they've got an American BBC here. And it, it weighs a ton. Yeah, yeah. We, had to, we had to go to cable, screen cables because all the standard beams yeah. had the, on screen cables. The mistake cables. that we made is we were so proud of the extensibility of the BBC Micro and all these connections. We never wanted to forgo it. If we just cut those extension capabilities and just put the basic BBC macro out, uh, we, we might have succeeded in mm -hmm. the States. Because I know now, because I've, not, I've met many of these Apple people at the time, Apple was scared of us because right. they realized that our computer was better than the Apple II. Uh, and they couldn't believe why we didn't, we, we didn't make any inroads into the, into the market. And the, and the answer was because um, our computer was so expensive because of the shielding that yeah. we had to do mm -hmm. to pass FCC and the delay because it took forever right, yeah. to get them past the FCC regulation. Yeah. Well, but I, I, think, think, I, think I think the F FCC was and always was intended to stop unwanted, keep, keep unwanted imports and it hit us worse than it hit most people because we had a high performance, high speed yes. load of and, and with lots of uh, connectivity. Mm. 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 So one of our great advantages that, that we felt was a great selling point, which was the connectivity. Because yeah. you, know, you could really connect pretty much anything to the back of a BBC Micro, as you know. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to preserve that. And yeah. I think with hindsight, that was... Really Even amazing. a second processor through the tube port. Yeah. Yes, but that came much later. <laughs> it's, it's on the very first machine. Do we need to go and get a machine and prove it? <laughs> um, well, we may have I, to. I, I'm, keen, I'm keen to see that because I... Yeah. But I think, I so think when did we actually design the tube? Oh, the tube chip? Yes. Well, after the BBC Micro. So yeah, probably sure. about 82, 83. But we actually had the, the, the chip on the original You board. had the interface. No, the no, interface was no, there. No, the interface. Mm -hmm. It's a ribbon cable connector that connects mm. to the tube chip yes. on the second yeah. processor yeah. module. Yes, but where yeah. was the tube chip? Was the, the, the tube this? chip actually on the motherboard? No, no, the no, that's no, no. The, the, tube, the, the tube chip is in the second processor. Peripheral. Ah, that I believe. But there is a tube connector. <laughs> yes, or a the tube, tube chip. I, I knew that. It I was all that. designed in, it just we hadn't got the hardware implementation. The thing that I did not know, which I learned today, is that Stephen had designed the well, tube be, as part of the proton design. The, yes, the exactly. Yeah, I know, mm. I know. And it came from his work on the bloody fruit machine. Well, tube. which was a double twin processor. Which was a twin processor system. Which, which was that's which a bit of a stretch, but never It's mind. a stretch, yes, it <laughs> is a stretch. But that's it does come it from well. the, the machine that we've got here, that, well, it's out, just out there, the, the machine that you first developed. Oh, you've um, got the, the first fruit machine here? Uh, no, not the fruit machine, but Steve's original personal development of a sort of rack yeah. mount. So a lot of the BBC Micro approach to multiplexing access to the RAM between the processor mm -hmm. and video was something I prototyped on the machine that on you've got here. That yeah. one, yeah. But yeah. did that have what, the ability that? for um, the, the tube interface? No. That, that I didn't. No, right, no. Okay. Was well, that the, the Signetix 2650? That was no, before that. No, that was my, that, this was... My second machine in yeah. Iraq, which Acorn funded, I'm sure, because you couldn't pay me because I was a research student. Uh, so you gave me bits luck, to go play with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, you got the 2650 machine as well. You got the 2650, yep. yep. Yeah. What did and you call that? Well, we got. Well, it was, it was just, it, I mean, they didn't call them anything. This was a hobbyist machine, which we, I built as part of. Didn't we ever build the 16032? 
Yes, Cam uh, Cambridge yeah. Workstation, yep. Cambridge yeah. Scientific Workstation. Uh, went into that, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's how we got the BBC completely swept and bowled over because we told, you know, they said, well, what about CPM? What about this? What about that? Well, mm -hmm. if we need to do it, we just put a Z80 second processor in and Which it runs CPM. Which we did. CPM. There was a, there was a Z80 really do this, so we yeah. second processor, do you Everything remember? was possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we did, we did. Yeah. We, we had a CPM machine Absolutely. as a second processor, yep. which was not a great success, actually. And you remember we, we bundled it with all that stuff from Microfocus um, because they had a lot of software, CPM software, and we thought we'd take the business market by storm, but that didn't quite uh, work. That was, that was the other disaster. It was the business machine. The business, the business machine. machine. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Is that the ABC? The ABC. Mm. The ABC. Jim Merri we drove Jim Merriman crazy with the ABC because he had a, a spec thing that was this thick to make this because um, I think it actually was my fault. I, I wanted to have everything in the... In the um, in the screen. In, in the one unit, yeah, yeah. In the one unit. Mm -hmm. And it, and make it swivel. Uh, you could have called it an iMac. And, that, and Apple made well, it nicely. I we made, made it ugly. <laughs> yes, we, that was, mm. was really... Uh, really we attractive. have the prototype of that machine here as well. So. Do you? Yeah, with a glass Actually, fiber case. Let's, let's go and have a look at this later well, well, Yeah, we can show you, definitely. Let's, um, yeah, so anyway, but... Right, let, let's wrap it up there. I think um, I, it's, I, I've really enjoyed myself. Thank you very much for... Um, well, thank you for bringing us together. It's an <laughs> enjoyable evening. It's what we do. Um, but yeah, I, I hope uh, the film has sort of given you a bit of an insight how to everybody sees you now, Chris. <laughs> um, I hope they've mostly forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now this, at least this has now corrected that. Um, but, um, but anyway, thank you very much for your time. Um, and um, hopefully we'll do this again. Maybe in another 10 years. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Thank <laughs> you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Bye.